Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for a hot topic. And this one says Nigeria's 2025 external debt servicing to hit $5.25 billion. And that is being said by Fitch. The global credit ratings agency Fitch has projected Nigeria's external debt servicing to rise by $400 million to $5.2 billion next year. This is despite insistence by the current administration to focus more on domestic borrowings from the capital market. It also estimated that approximately 30% of Nigeria's external revenues or reserves are constituted by foreign exchange bank swaps. This was disclosed in the latest credit outlook for the country. And joining me to have a conversation is Nick Aguli. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining me. Uh, good morning. Good morning to our viewers. Yeah, good morning to you. All right, so we're looking at our debt servicing, and then, you know, this global rating, um, you know, Fitch has come out to say that well, our debt servicing will rise with about 400, you know, million dollars for next year in 2025. Currently, um, we're, we have a huge chunk already. So seeing it go from um, that to about $5.2 billion next year, isn't that alarming? And I'm just wondering why we're borrowing so much, but I want to get your take on this first. Yes, that is very alarming indeed. Because already by our budget, even if you look at the 2024 budget, you realize that we are turning over almost all the revenues that were generated into debt servicing. And currently, the government is borrowing heavily both on the domestic and foreign uh, thing, yeah. because what you will notice is that the Central Bank of Nigeria, through the Monetary Policy Committee, has been increasing interest rates. And if you read the minutes of meeting of the MPC, that is the Monetary Policy Committee, yeah. you will see the mind of the members that they are increasing this interest rate not only to fight inflation but to attract foreign portfolio investment and for foreign portfolio investment is what you call hot money these are monies that foreign investors bring in and invest in um, security like 30 day treasury bills or 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, after which they take their money out. In comparison to foreign direct investment, which is money they bring in to build infrastructure, provide services, and want business in Nigeria to make money. So, foreign portfolio investment, which is the hot money, has been on the increase. The government uh, is happy that. Uh, dollars are coming in which they are using to manage the foreign exchange market but the ramification will come as we have to repay these loans with high interest rates you know the monetary policy committee rate is now over the 20 percent mark that is very high yeah. you know in comparison to other economies where interest rates on loans ranging to probably like the two, three, five percent at most. And Nigeria is doing over twenty percent. The day of the Amagedon is coming when these loans are not due for repayment. Mm. So this data is credible, the data is valid because we have been doing a lot of treasury bills, which is um, uh, local loans, we've been doing a lot of uh, foreign portfolio investment loans, and that time we come, we have to repay them with interest. <laughs> so you said the day of the Magdalene is coming, where we have to repay the loans with the interest, obviously. But then I'm just wondering when that day is going to come. Is it going to come now or much later? And then if it comes much later, what do we have for you know our kids, the generations to come? Are we going to keep plunging into debt? year in year out because this has been for a while 
And I'm wondering why we're borrowing so much. Now, I know people say borrowing is good, but if you're using it for a, you know, for a good cause, so why is Nigeria borrowing so much? Are we not making enough money? And even the monies that we're borrowing, why are we not using it to maybe trade or do something that would you know, fetch us more money for us to be able to repay the loan and be free from debt? What do you think? Nigeria is not making enough money. If you look at our federal government budget, social revenue to be generated by the federal government is a neighborhood of about 10 trillion naira. And that is, that is less than 10 billion dollars. Mm. For an economy like Nigeria, you, we should be a trillion dollar economy. Trillion dollar. And we're not even talking about 100 billion. We're talking about, you know, 10 to 20 billion dollars revenue. That's so, so small. Nigeria is like, like, this is what I always like to say. That Nigeria is like a family with five children living in Lagos and any 10,000 naira per month. Mm -hmm. That family's income is so low they are regardless of the good intentions of the parents, they are not going to be able to lift that family out of poverty. And that is why you hear about multidimensional poverty in Nigeria. Mm. It is simply because we are not generating enough revenue. And the reason we are not generating enough revenue is very glaring. The economy is not working. You know, as we speak today, this economy is generating and supplying 3,000 million worth of electricity to both domestic, commercial, and industrial use. This is electricity that they have a single industrial park where we get. You know, in comparison, an economy like Brazil, which has a similar population like that, is getting 180,000 megawatts. So if you have so small electricity supply, there's no way the economy is going to grow. You know, then the other thing, of course, is that crude oil, which is our mainstay, the mainstay of our economy, our major export commodity, is being stolen in the Niger Delta. They produce it and they steal it. And the government isn't really doing anything about it. It's positive as we, as, as we have seen. And then, of course, the other thing is uh, agriculture. If we mechanized agriculture, get to the insecurity in our farms. You see, the rains are back now. And with the rains, uh, we can uh, produce a lot of food, both for Nigeria's consumption and for export, so that we can earn money. You know, uh, I am in Abuja, and I'm speaking to you from Abuja. Uh, I should be able, from Abuja, now I'll take a train and travel to any of the Kakiti states of the Federation. But there's only one rail line from Abuja to Kaduna. No, no line to any other state. You know, these are opportunities begging, begging for unlocking of humongous value. That's how you grow the economy, you know. Uh, we have the steel sector, the steel plants, they, they were built, they be right there, you know, but the steel plant is what we need to supply the manufacturing sector to be able to build machines and vehicles and engines for us, you know, and then uh, provide the uh, raw material for, for construction, industry, and all of that. That's all stayed there, you know, and nobody is, is talking about this thing. So you see, we have to go back to the baby and do what is needed so that we can grow the economy, generate more money, you know, create employment with the multiplier effect. You know, have a humongous foreign exchange earnings. And when we deal with insecurity, even tourism, we thrive. We have the sunshine, which uh, Europeans, Americans, the Chinese, Japanese, they will come here to enjoy and bring in the money. So the, the truth of the matter is that we, we aren't doing enough to, to generate uh, money and grow the economy. On the other hand, uh, there's nothing wrong with the loan. Uh, almost uh, all countries have loans. 
even in finance, there is a theory called the gearing theory. And that theory has proven that companies that have loans on their balance sheet, they do better financially than companies that don't have loans. The big question always is, what are you using that loan to do? In Nigeria, the government is giving loans to eat food, mm -hmm. which is pay salary. When you are borrowing to pay salary, there is not a problem. You know, it's like a family. If you bring it down to for better understanding of my, my viewers, if you bring it down to a family unit. A family where the income earned by the father and the mother isn't enough to feed the family. So the family now has to go and borrow to buy food. And when their income comes, they use the income to pay the loans, service the loans, and then go and borrow again to eat. That income is in, that family is in dire financial strain. And unfortunately, <laughs> that is the situation Nigeria finds itself. If we were borrowing, like if we look at the example of this family, if this family were borrowing to invest, so they borrow to, to, to invest in land, invest in property, which will not be generating rent, invest in uh, stock and shares, invest in the business. If the family was borrowing to invest, then that business they are investing in is the one that will generate money and service the loan and repay the loan. There's no problem with that. You know, so Nigeria is borrowing for the current expenditure, to fund the current expenditure. And that's really where the problem is. If we were borrowing to build infrastructure, for instance, you, you borrow now to build power plants, transmission lines, and distribution networks to increase our power supply from, say, this 3,000 megawatts to about 10,000 megawatts, 20,000 megawatts. The extra electricity that is generated and supplied will be sold, and the money will now be, will be gotten back and the loan service, and the economy will be happier for it because we now have more power supply. That is the kind of thing you do with a loan, then the loan is okay. Our problem is that our loans are funding the current expenditure. And that is why we are in dire financial state. Well, so I mean, asking what they use the loan for, I, I'm just wondering because even Sarab has taken to court the 36 state governors and the FCT minister, you know, because they've been asking, what have you done with the loan? So all of the projects that you've done, but we're not even seeing so much with the loans that they're taking. And like you've said, you know, other countries, you know, they take loans, but you're seeing that they use that to um, just better their economy they use that to invest into infrastructure into agriculture into anything that can you know even give them more revenue and i'm just wondering why in nigeria we're using loans to splurge because you're seeing you know the government the officials splurging with um, maybe they're saying they want to buy 160 million naira suvs they want to go abroad all the time foreign travels and all of these things take money right so don't you think the government should be you know take going back to the drawing board and say okay what can we do to start to cut costs shouldn't the government be trying to cut costs at this point for instance the current president has the largest you know cabinet in history at the moment why are we having to pay so much and the salaries for these you know officials are not even small monies they are actually millions right so isn't the government supposed to be cutting costs and if we are to cut costs what ways would you advise that we cut costs so that our debt servicing isn't so much yeah i think the, you are very correct in what you have said you yeah. are totally correct and this whole thing comes down to leadership the quality of leadership determines the state of financial I tell people this story that uh, for Christians or those who have read the Christian Bible, you look at uh, the story of the Israelites. The Israelites as the people, their faith depended on their king. If the king worshipped God, the people of Israel worshipped God. If they got another king that worshipped idols, the same people of Israel, they are worshipping God, will not turn around to start worshipping idols. So 
So you now see the impact of leadership on the people. The direction the leaders are going is likely going to be the direction that the people are going to be going as well. Nigeria has a leadership problem. We have to agree with that. Mm. Like you are saying, so if we had leaders that were nationalistic in their thinking, leaders that were working for Nigeria to say, our objective is to make Nigeria to, 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 to be great. Our objective is to grow Nigeria's economy to be one of the top economies in the world. Our idea is to eradicate poverty, to provide healthcare, education, security, and other basic services to Nigeria. The kind of leadership, like we talk about Lu Kuan Yu of Singapore, we talk about Mandela in South Africa, we talk about Mohammed Mahaki in Malaysia, you know, and now in recent times, we talk about Paul Kagame in Rwanda. That is the kind of leadership that we uplift the nation. But let's not forget that in the recent past, the former first lady, Aisha Buhari, she in Asu Villa, where she lived with her husband, President Buhari, when they were in power. Yeah. Within a few months of studying how these people were behaving in the villa, came out to describe them as Hayana and Jakar. These are not my words. These are not words. Hmm. And it is unfortunate, therefore, that Nigeria is being led by Hayana and Jakar. Hayana and Jakar aren't going to do what you correctly postulated. They are not going to use loans to build the nation, like investing in agriculture, to boost food production, to domestic consumption and export. They are not going to build infrastructure. They are not going to bring electricity. They won't do the rail line. They won't upgrade the steel plant. They won't do the refineries. They won't do all that. All they do, as a Hyena and a Jaka, is to tear the meat and eat it to their own tummies. They are animals. This is what that first lady described them to be. But you know, the solution to this is not with the leaders. Because you don't expect hyenas and jackals after tearing the meat and eating it to just wake up one day and say, we are not going to be hyenas and jackals again. We want to be human beings. That is very impossible. Mm -hmm. The solution lies with the people of Nigeria. Who suffering? Thing? has been submitted to these leaders to run Nigeria to us. To the people of Nigeria, there, there needs to be a reorientation. There needs to be a new thinking, a new beginning amongst us to say, these leaders are our servants. And that is why they are called public servants. And the other group is called civil servants. They are our servants. They are running our Nigeria on our behalf. And we cannot let them run this country aground, as we're discussing here today, using almost all the money that we generate in a, in a year to service loans, and then now live on new loans. The people of Nigeria need to say no to that. You know, and our saying no is not just at the ballot box, which majority of us are not even bothering to go to, but we have to accompany these leaders through the four year tenure of the administration. Our eyes have to be led. There is no country where the leaders know that the people are docile, are uninterested, are far removed from the governor process, we let them do as they like. When leaders know that the people have allowed us to do as as they like, they are not going to deliver good governance to us. In those nations that our young people are running to, UK, uh, US, Canada, Australia, once they land there, they will see the difference. That there, the people don't give the leaders an oath. The people are hand in hand, leg in leg, with the leaders on a daily basis. So, this kind of thing is that you see, we are talking about, look at the list of governors that have been released, and how much money they stole. You know, people signing um, government money to private accounts. That will not happen in the UK. It will never happen in the US. 
or Canada, or Australian, in, in people will force those leaders out of power. In Nigeria, we just need to get going. If we don't get going, we're pressuring our leaders to deliver good governance. We will be back here having this conversation even in the next five years. So how do we how do we hold them accountable? Because I'm sure not everybody is happy about the fact that you know we're borrowing so much and we're not seeing what it's being used for. So how do we hold these leaders accountable? I know you've said it's not just by the polls, but you know practical steps that we can say, you know what, we need some form of transparency here. We need accountability from you. I know that there are CSOs who are championing this, such as Sarah, who is um, taking them to court. But even for someone who's watching at home, how can I um, just make sure that I'm holding all of these leaders accountable and not just the president or the ministers, even people like the local government chairman, um, the state governors, the, 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 the chancellors? Like, how do we make sure that we're holding every single one who is in a public office accountable? How do we do that? So the, the constitution of Nigeria, in my first as it is, has provided the citizens the way to hold the leaders accountable. So the, the government and the local government, they have a legislature. The government and the state have a legislature and a judiciary. The government at the federal has a legislature and a judiciary. The constitution provides for the president of Nigeria, the governors in Nigeria, and the local government chairman to be removed from office. If they are not performing, to be removed from office. Now, if the legislature, which is to remove the executive arm of government from office, are not doing their work, as they are not doing in Nigeria today, the Constitution provides the citizens the power to recall members of the legislative arm of government from office. Recall them back so that the people we elect members of the legislature who will do their bidding to go to the assembly and do it. I know that a lot of people speaking, I mean, a lot of people listening to me as I speak now, yeah. will be saying, oh, how is that going to be possible? They are trying in the past to recall legislators. It didn't work. You, this thing is not a sprint where you do it once, you fail, then you go and put down. You continue knocking on the door of that recall process until you succeed. As we speak today, if Nigerians decided that, okay, members of the National Assembly, look at the poverty that has been thrown on Nigerians. Yes, you will carry the 150 million naira as you say, or whatever amount you want. Mm. To buy a, 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 a MSUV eat for yourselves, why we grown under a, a few subsidy remover, we grow under uh, uh, forex uh, unification, we grow under interest rate hike, we grow under electricity subsidy remover. But you people are using this kind of money to to buy um, uh, SUVs for yourself. Mm -hmm. If we start a recall process for the entire 109 senators in Nigeria, for the entire 360 members of the House of Rep, do you know that that thing will cause an earthquake in the National Assembly. Whether that process of things or not, for the fact that Nigeria broadly, in all constituencies in, in, in Nigeria, have decided to start that record process, collect the representation of signatures and send it to Ireland to begin that record process. That is what is going to put pressure on the leaders in the National Assembly to say, oh, whoa, we are here, our jobs are at risk, we have to do what is the need for. So this is what I'm saying. In Nigeria, you have civil society, you have civil union, you have market union, you have a, a trade union, you have a, all sorts of uh, bodies. But nobody is even attempting to use the constitution to put pressure on leaders. You know, even members of the National Assembly, state assembly, and local government assembly know that their jobs are at risk. And citizens 
are about to record them from office, you begin to see a uh, differences in the governance process in Nigeria. So that is a place where Nigerians need to understand that in democracies all over the world, it is the citizens that actually make the democracy work for them. Mm. Citizens don't sit back and wait and just decide that whatever the leader do for us, we will take it. Mm. Whatever. You know, if they make a... Uh, electricity very scarce, it's not available, it's not affordable. Then let us go and be solar, let's go and be battery, let's be doing the battery. No, no, no. The citizens will say no to the leader because the leaders are actually uh, working for, for the people, they're not working for themselves. So, the, your question as to how can this thing happen? My answer is that the constitution provides us a way for it to happen, and we just need to start working the constitution. This is the answer. Chris, well, we just hope that, um, I mean, everyone rise up to the challenge to ensure that we're holding these leaders accountable because $5.2 billion um, as our debt is quite, is quite alarming. And um, we hope that the Nigerian government as well is trying to make more opportunities to ensure that we're making more revenue and we can service this debt. Nika Gule, we want to say thank you for coming. It's lovely having the conversation with you on this. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Happy day to our viewers. You too, thank you. We've been speaking with Nick Agule, he's a public affairs analyst, and we're talking about the fact that Nigeria's debt servicing is going to hit about $5.2 billion in 2025. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll take our next hot topic, so please stay with us. <laughs>